Hey everyone, in this video we're going to have a look at how the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H processor fares against the mid-tier option in the same family, the Ryzen 5 4600H, in benchmarks, in games and in real-life use. We'll also look at how these two compare to a couple of other platforms included on mid-tier performance laptops such as the Ryzen 3000 series or the 9th gen Intel Core i9, i7 and i5 processors. All the results included in the video are based on our findings and our reviews, available here on the channel and especially on the site on ultrabookreview.com. The new Ryzen 7 and 5 4000 processors have been both tested on the same chassis, the ASUS TUF Gaming A15, and that eliminates any discrepancies that might be caused by different internal designs and different thermal modules. Furthermore, the Ryzen 7 3000 APU has also been tested on an ASUS TUF Gaming laptop from the previous generation with a very similar internal layout. The Intel Core i7 results are based on one of the better designs you can find out there in the 15-inch segment, the MSI Raider GE65, while the Core i5 has been reviewed on the mid-range Lenovo Legion Y540. All these laptops get dual-channel RAM, SSD storage and roughly similar NVIDIA graphics, as you can see in this quick summary. You should keep in mind that all our tests are running on the highest performance profiles available for these laptops and we've also undervolted the Intel processors. That's something everyone can easily do with XTU or Throttle Stop when looking to increase the performance and thermals of their Intel-based laptop, that's why we've included the undervolted profiles in this comparison, even if uh, it might seem somewhat unfair for the Ryzen processors that cannot be undervolted, at least at this point. With that out of the way, we'll start by having a look at Cinebench results. Both of the Ryzen 4000 platforms come at the top in Cinebench R15. They demolish the Intel options in the multi-core part of this test and the Intel i7 only has a small edge over the 6-core Ryzen 5 in the single-core test but loses to the Ryzen 7 8-core processor. It is however important to keep in mind that many notebooks can return high scores in Cinebench uh, for the first runs, but then the performance drops once the heat builds up and the hardware has to clock down in order to cope with it. That's why we're also running a longer term Cinebench loop test on our laptops and see how the score fluctuates after 15 runs. The results are illustrated in this chart and you can see that all the laptops included here can sustain solid performance over multiple runs with only some slight drops for the Core i9-9880H and the Ryzen 5 4600H configurations. We also ran the Cinebench R20 test which is a similar CPU benchmark but takes longer to execute and thus stresses the processor for a longer time. There's no surprise here, the Ryzen 4000 models come on top in both single and multi-core loads. Blender is a popular rendering application and we've ran our CPU tests on the BMW and Classroom scenes. However, we don't have results for all our test samples since this is something we've more recently included in our benchmark suit. The Ryzen 7 4800H finishes fastest, but even the Ryzen 5 manages to outmatch the Core i7 on the MSI G65 Raider by about 10%. Next, we're looking at Passmark results, which runs a suite of different CPU and 3D graphics tests. Ryzen systems come on top in the CPU tests, which include mathematical calculations, compression, encryption and physical simulations. The Intel RTX 2060 models win in the 3D graphics test though. PCMark is a productivity test and assesses not just the CPU, but rather the entire hardware configuration in a couple of different scenarios. Essentials looks at everyday workloads such as web browsing, video conferencing and how fast apps are loading. Productivity measures the system's performance in office applications such as working with Word or spreadsheet documents. Digital content creation looks at the system's ability to handle digital content with photo and video editing and video rendering tests. The Ryzen systems fare well in the first test, but surprisingly lose to the Intel RTX models in the digital content creation test, where the faster GPU takes over. Geekbench is a balanced synthetic CPU benchmark that includes a couple of different operations such as encryption, compression or memory operations, and we ran both the 4th and the 5th versions of this test on our laptops. The Intel i7 keeps an edge in some of the single core tests, but loses to both of the Ryzen 4000 models in multi-core loads. Next, the X264 and X265 benchmarks are designed to assess the processor's uh, Full HD video encoding capabilities and we ran both versions on these laptops. The one-pass iteration of X264 runs faster but with poorer quality and efficiency, while the two-pass takes longer but delivers superior results. Both of the Ryzen 4000 models come on top in this instance and similar results are returned by the newer X265 Full HD benchmark. Handbrake is another video test that measures how fast the CPUs transcode a clip from 4K to 1080p. We haven't run this test on all our laptops, so we only have the Ryzen 4000 and the Core i7 data to compare in this case. Finally, we're also looking at some 3 d Mark tests, primarily the CPU-related sections of Firestrike and TimeSpy. 
The Ryzen 7 wins in both cases, while the i7 and the Ryzen 5 trade blows, each winning in one case. The MSI G65 Raider wins in the graphics department in both tests though. Ok, that's about it for the synthetic benchmarks, let's also look at some of the gaming results now. As I mentioned earlier, all these systems get dual channel memory and SSD storage, and most get RTX 2060 graphics, but in a couple of different implementations. Furthermore, the Ryzen 5 4600H is only paired with a GTX 1660 Ti GPU, that's why we've also thrown in a Core i7-9750H plus GTX 1660Ti configuration here from our review of the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M15. It's also important to keep in mind that the GPUs are overclocked by default on all these configurations on their turbo profiles. The Lenovo Legion Y540 is the only one that doesn't offer a default overclocked GPU profile, so we manually overclocked it for our tests and included those results here in order to make the comparison fairer. Finally, our Ryzen 4000 results are based on early drivers and software available as of early April 2020, so consider that they might improve with future software updates. Ok, Witcher 3 is the first game we're considering here and it's mostly a GPU heavy title. In this case we're using Fraps to record min and max frame rates during roughly the same gameplay section since this title lacks a built-in benchmarking tool. I know it's not the most conclusive way to do this, but it's what we have for now and we'll update our testing methodology for future reviews. The Intel configurations come on top in this test, especially the overclocked GE65 Raider, and surprisingly the Ryzen 5 4600H A15 even trails the Ryzen 7 3000 model by a fair margin. That's odd. Far Cry 5 is a more balanced title and all the results are based on the included benchmarking utility. The higher clocked RTX 2060 in the GE65 Raider comes on top once more, but the Ryzen configurations fare pretty well against the other competitors. Shadow of Tomb Raider is the next title in our list and this is a GPU heavy title. The results are also from the included benchmarking utility. The Intel RTX models come on top again, while the GTX 1660 Ti versions score lower. There's also a big jump from the Ryzen 3000 to the Ryzen 4000 RTX 2060 models. Middle of Earth Shadow of Mordor is an older title that we're including here to see how these platforms handle aging games. As expected, they all do well in this case and the AMD models even score above the Intel versions. Finally, Battlefield 5 is a recent game that supports the X12 and ray tracing. It doesn't get a benchmarking tool, so the results are min and max frame rates recorded while playing a single player mission. For some reason, the game failed to start on our Ryzen 7 4800H configuration, so there's no data for it here. Ok, as expected, an 8 core processor such as the AMD Ryzen 7 won't do that much for you in games, which can hardly scale over this many cores. That aside, the A15 Ryzen models we've tested here tend to run very hot, and that further impacts their gaming performance in comparison to some of the better Intel design, such as the MSI G65 Raider included here. But that's only one of the many good Intel models, which also have another major advantage on their side, better quality graphics. Right now, an RTX 2060 is the best you can get on an AMD Ryzen 4000 laptop, while Intel 10 Gen notebooks get up to RTX 2080 super chips. So for now, Intel is still the way to go for gaming, and that won't unfortunately change anytime soon. Even so, AMD notebooks fare a lot better in games than they used to, as the gains over the previous Ryzen 3000 platform are significant. On top of that, these Ryzen 4000 platforms are excellent power horses and options to consider if you plan to put them to good work in applications that can actually benefit from their increased core count. Not the least, many of these AMD notebooks are also aggressively priced, which further adds to their overall value. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video and I'm looking for your comments and impressions down below in the comment section. Also, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for our future work, it makes a huge difference for our small channel. And by the way, I know we haven't done videos in a long time, that's why most of our reviews are on the site and they include extra information on all these platforms and notebooks with detailed performance logs with more benchmarks and gaming tests. So have a look if you're interested in this stuff. See you later.